So in this video, uh, we're talking about one of the major skills in calculus, and that's implicit differentiation. And what this implicit word really just means is that we've got some kind of a function um, where, for example, both x and y could be independent and dependent. Independent and dependent. Okay. And what do I mean by that? Well, if maybe I have a function like like a circle, right? x squared plus y squared equals 1, right? Both x and y are independent and depend on each other. Um, you know, so neither one of these variables are what we would call the subject of the equation. So in this case, if I were to go to derive it, sure, I could rearrange my function, but in a lot of cases, it's easier not to. So implicit differentiation is going to talk about actually how we derive um, these functions. And there's one very simple rule of thumb. Um, a lot of sources, a lot of textbooks, a lot of professors will try to teach this in this complicated chain rule kind of way. But we can boil the chain rule down, sorry, we can boil implicit differentiation down to one very simple rule, which is this. Anytime I derive a term that has a variable other than the one I'm deriving with respect to, you need to include what we call the differential, that dy by dx, for example, in that term. Otherwise, everything we know to normally do, all of our normal derivative tools, are valid and should be considered. What do I mean by this? So if I'm using my example above, right, if I'm sticking with my x squared plus y squared equals 1, and I'm considering deriving this function, I want to find the derivative of this function. All my normal tricks apply, right? I'm still going to go term by term. Um, so right, my first term would just be 2x. But how do I derive y squared with respect to x when I'm considering it still as a variable? Well, what implicit differentiation says is I'm just going to derive this as normal, right? Just use my power rule, except you notice, right, that the variable here does not match the variable we're claiming to derive with respect to, right? I'm deriving with respect to x. That's what this is saying. Use a color here. Right, this is saying that I'm deriving with respect to x. Well, and this is clearly not an x. So my rule just says I'm going to apply my normal derivative tools as long as I stick this differential term on the end, just to acknowledge the fact that, hey, you know, what I'm doing here isn't quite exactly the derivative of the function. There's this little extra piece that's factoring in. Um, you know, this is my... This is my way of kind of acknowledging that the variable is different. And then I still finish the problem. I still go term by term. Um, derivative of a constant is 0. All right, so that's all that's talking about. So my first example, find dy by dx when I have the implicit function given here. And all of the problems, or many of the problems that you see, will be set up in this way. Right? Find dy by dx. Well, like I said, we're just going to apply our normal derivative tricks, right? So if I'm considering deriving this whole function, and normally maybe I wouldn't write this out all the way, but I want to be able to kind of show you what's going on. All right, if I derive this entire function, I'm going to start with just my normal rules, right? Power rule, 2x. And now I get to the second term, and of course we see that the variable I'm considering does not match the variable I'm being asked to derive with respect to. Right, these do not match. So it still says I'm gonna my rule still says derive like normal. This is power rule, so this becomes 10y. But because my variable doesn't match, I need to add that differential term in. Right, this is my way to introduce the derivative into my function. Um, and of course, derivative of a constant is zero. So we're not done though, because we're being asked to actually find dy by dx, which means we need to solve for dy by dx. And for this, I'm just gonna use my normal algebra skills, right? I'm gonna subtract 2x. 
I'm going to divide by 10y. So we get this, which we can, of course, um, reduce to get negative x over 5y. And this now would be my final answer. Right? This is now my derivative. This is the representation of my slope, just as it was before. So all of our tricks from before apply like normal. And what you're going to see a lot of times with the chain rule, kind of one of our big features, kind of one of our hallmarks of the chain rule. Sorry, I keep saying that. Hallmarks of implicit differentiation. Hallmarks of implicit differentiation. It means that you're going to tend to see, maybe this is why I keep thinking chain rule, um, you're going to tend to see a lot of product rule, and oftentimes, too, a lot of chain rule. But your process is still the same. Anytime I see something with a, a variable that doesn't match, I need to include that dy by dx term. So, you know, same process applies here. Find dy by dx when x squared plus 2xy equals 3y. So just as before, right? find dy by dx, and we're just going to take this one piece at a time, right? So just as before, I want to consider what happens when I derive my entire function. Okay, well, for this first term, oops, for this first term, fairly straightforward, right? Just my power rule, 2x. This second term, I have a product here, right? I have 2x times y. So before I do anything with it, I need to consider the product rule. So I'm going to identify a u and a v, and I find it easiest to leave my y alone. So I'm going to split my product up along the way the variable gets divided. Gets, I'm sorry, get put together. So I'm going to split them up by variable. All right, so if I just derive u, I just get 2, right? If I derive my v, and keep in mind we're still doing all of this with respect to x, um, my variables don't match, right? So I'm going to derive like normal. Derivative of y would just be 1. Um, and I have to account for this difference with that dy by dx term. So we would just, obviously we don't need a 1 there, so we would just call this dy by dx. So applying my product rule, Uh, uv prime is going to give me 2x dy by dx. v u prime is going to give me 2y. It's okay that it's there's a y there. Um, and that's the end of my product rule. And then, of course, my last term on the right-hand side, it would be 3 with that differential again, dy by dx. So once again, I have a term with a mismatched variable. End of part one, right? That's just my implicit differentiation step. Now I want to actually find dy by dx. So I need to rearrange this whole thing. Uh, so let me actually copy my function down here. So 2x plus 2x dy by dx plus 2y plus 3 dy by dx. We're going to treat this just like we did in algebra, right? If I were to solve a thing like 2x plus 3y equals 4x plus 2, right? I would collect all my x's, right? I would subtract the 2, and I would divide by 3. Right? The same idea applies. The same idea applies. So I need to get all my dy by dx's together. So Here's a term with a dy by dx, and here's a term with a dy by dx. So let's collect those first. Um, so I get 2x plus 2y equals 3 dy by dx minus 2x dy by dx. I still need to get this term alone, right? I want to solve for dy dx. So this is kind of my new step is to factor. Right, we have a dy dx in common, so I can, I can factor. So we have dy dx, and then when I factor that out, 3 minus 2x, and of course then my last step is just to divide. So 
put it in a different color so it sticks out. Um, so my dy uh, dx is just going to be 2x plus 2y divided by 3 minus 2x. You know, so we're starting to consider cases where now I have you know, multi, multiple variables in my equation, and that's fine. Um, but this process is not nearly as bad as it looks, nearly as bad as the book makes it look. Um, one very simple rule, right? Just as long as I see a case where the variable I'm considering in my term does not match up with the variable that I'm deriving with respect to, I need to include my dy dx or d whatever the variables are to acknowledge the fact that there is that kind of disconnect, right? This is my way of kind of accounting for the difference. Um, it's what I like to call, um, based on a book called Burn Math Class that I absolutely love, um, and they kind of coined the term, but it's what I like to call lying about the math. and then correcting for it later. Right, where we're just gonna say, well, for now we're just gonna consider it x, but it's really not, and this is what's gonna kind of make up for it. So I have one last problem that I wanna consider here. Um, these tangent line problems are still very much in play. Um, except usually now I have to give you the point because a lot of times these equations are not easy to solve for normally um, or explicitly. So find the equation of the line tangent to the circle given there at the point 1, 7. Just like before, right? Normally if I were to find the equation of a line, I'm going to start with my slope intercept form. Sorry, my um, point slope form. And my point slope form. So I need to know a whole bunch of things, right? What do I need to know? I need to know my point x1, y1, which I do. It's right there, it's 1, 7. And I need to know the slope. Well, in calculus, slope is represented by the derivative. If I wanna derive this function implicitly, that is my dy by dx. And I'm just gonna take it and evaluate it at the point 1, 7. So we have some work to do first. All right, so we're actually going to start then by finding the derivative of my function. So just as before, right, term by term, 2x plus, here's my disconnect, right? So um, now we have a chain rule. Um, I'm just going to derive the outside as normal. So 2 times y minus 4 and then derive the inside. So of course the derivative of y with respect to x is just that dy by dx, and the derivative of the constant is zero. So what do I need to do? Of course I need to find dy dx, so I need to solve this. I'm just gonna move everything over, right? So we get negative two x divided by two times y minus four. Um, if you wanna simplify this, you can, right? So I could just treat this as x, negative x over y minus four. Um, but I need an actual number, which is where my point comes into play. So I'm just going to take this and evaluate it for when x and y are equal to 1 and 7, respectively. So I get negative 1 over 7 minus 4, which is 3. Then my slope at that point is negative 1 third. So nothing really different than what we've done before, just in a new context. So just as before, everything goes back right into the equation. So my point was 1, 7. So y minus 7 equals negative 1 third, x minus 1. So we get y equals negative 1 third, x be plus 1 third, plus 7, so plus 22 over 3. I believe so, right, 7 and a third, yeah. Um, so here is now the line tangent to my circle at that point. And we could do this with the normal line as well, right? If I wanted to do the normal line, um, my new slope would just be the opposite and reciprocal. And then I would just carry this process out 
all over again. X minus one, so we get three X, that's minus three, minus three plus seven is po uh, positive four. So there's the equation of my normal. Um, nothing overwhelmingly new in this problem, except of course the use of our implicit differentiation. But as you'll see, right, the only thing I'm adding differently in implicit differentiation is accounting for that different variable with that dy dx or d whatever um, at the end of that term. That's all it is. It's not nearly as scary as it looks.